I want to ask you one quote from Miles yeah. Potter. Okay, here we go. <laughs> Miles Potter, uh, uh, Miles says you, you were re re-rehearsing 1837. Yeah. And you'd gotten some costumes from Stratford, because yes. 1837 set in the 19th yeah, century. Yeah, 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 yeah. You got some costumes from Stratford, mm -hmm. and you, you were reworking some scenes. Yeah. And finally, in frustration, you said, Miles, all you're doing is coat acting. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, it's a tyranny. They're beautiful coats. I'd love to own one and be able to wear it, but you know, they're like, uh, yeah. But well, he obviously stopped because his uh, one of my favorite favorite scenes that actors ever improvised was a scene where he played uh, Tiger Dunlop. You know, we were trying to we're trying to we you know going through this thing. How do we show people why or you know why it might why it didn't work, why the rebellion didn't turn into a revolution. And uh, Salutin, Rick Salutin, who was the author on the show, said, well, in the American version, the middle class saw their interest and went with the revolution. In Canada, the middle class stuck with the British overlords. And the best example of that was Tiger Dunlop in Godrich, working for one of the uh, son-in-law of the family compact, hating it, writing about how he hated it, and being a nice nonconformist himself. So we concocted the scene where Mackenzie and um, the character David was playing uh, Anthony Van Egmond. And the coat, where does the coat come in? Okay, well, he, Miles is wearing, this is the scene right. where Miles wears the coat. He plays Tiger Dunlop. But the scene that they invented out of this was a fantastic uh, example for me of when actors can put themselves into a transcendent state they can create something uh, that is very close to literature. And it, you know, the scene has metaphor, it has anecdote, it has, you know, starts with humor, it goes to the drama, it has high language, it has brilliant assessments. For example, Miles the coat turns to Mackenzie and says, you're talking about revolution. My God, man, you are not the man to lead it. You couldn't even buy a cow without offending the herdsman. <laughs> now, you know, that's as good a line as any writer is going to come And that's Miles's? That's Miles Potter's line. So just a tick of this little... That just came out of the air right there. And, uh, you know, I can basically cite you that scene from memory because it's so uh, embedded in uh, the experiences that we were doing. So what is the mix then between a collective creation and there's Rick Salutin as the writer on the On project. that one he knew, what he, he'd worked with George <coughs> Luscombe and he knew the, the perils. I mean, in fact, he'd offered this uh, show, this theme to Luscombe and you know, Luscombe either put it on a waiting list or didn't want to buy into it or whatever. So was 1837 a mix of uh, collaborative writing and Rick's writing? Well, Rick, he tried to write on it. You can actually read that in the preface. He says, you know, he concluded by saying, I, I am the writer on this project. I am not the writer of this play. Uh -huh. Yeah, and uh, he realized that at the sp speed and pace that this company, which had been, you know, created in the uh, the burning furnaces of the collective of pass of the farm show, and had been redeemed by an audience. There's nothing more interesting than an actor who you know, has made some, you know, daring choices and then the audience says, you know, you were brilliant for doing that. Mm. Uh, you actually may think you can do it again, you know. 